Hello friends. We will now see a video in which Saidipak debunks the left-wing and Islamic partisans' claims that gender discrimination prevails in Hindu temples. He refutes their argument very nicely. The argument he uses for that is very simple and has logic that everyone can understand. But there has a flip side to his arguments. None of us understand much about or the thing that we ignore lightly. This is what we need to discuss. So, first, let's see how he debunks these narratives and what arguments he makes for them. After that, we will discuss the flip side of his argument. Watch the video. I have seen over the course of this debate and several debates, repeated references to untouchability, to sati and whatnot. There is only one temple dedicated to a specific deity who happens to be a brahmachari and in that particular place there is a restriction for a particular age group not because of menstruation but because he is a brahmachari and Good. we are being told that that practice needs to be necessarily compared with untouchability that needs to be compared with sati pratha that needs to be compared with widow remarriage where is the sense of proportion in this debate oh, second i'd like to add I, something I, i'll have to finish my point i'm not yet done ma'am and i have been silent all along it doesn't make a difference if India is a secular country or not. You know why? Because a place of worship is not a secular place. By definition, it is a religious place. Okay? So please do not apply secular logic to religious places because you will not tolerate application of religious logic to secular places. Okay? Okay, my only... I'm not done. Uh, I'm not done. No. I'm not done. Please, hold on. Anybody, I challenge members of this audience, because you happen to be a citizen of this country, can you just get into the Supreme Court and say that I will practice in the Supreme Court without having the necessary qualification, without following the necessary rules? Because then your argument is going to be, no, no, but when the Supreme Court comes out with rules, these rules are meant for everyone, there are not separate rules. Fantastic. Then why don't you recognize the fact that when it comes to the Hindu faith, it believes in diversity of spaces. There are specific spaces which are dedicated to a specific form of energy and there are specific spaces which are open to everyone. If this particular faith's diversity is finished through the weaponized form of equality, which is nothing but standardization, I'm sorry to say it will result in unwarranted Abrahamization of the Hindu faith and it will lose its originality, which I think is against the concept of Article 25 and 26. I'll just make one final point, one final point. You know, it's always possible to, to muddle the entire argument and muddle the entire issue by comparing it with something very, very bad or terrible. Nobody has been able to ask or let's say answer the specific question. When you say that this temple does not allow women and it has a problem with women, it is based on misogyny, it's based on patriarchy. I want to ask each of these people, what do you know about the temple before you have made that comment? What have you read before you have made that comment? Are you saying that you know better than centuries of people who have actually worshipped at the temple and who have practiced that particular faith? Unless and until you have a specific position, kindly don't make yourself the representative of the entire female community. You're not. Second, you can't speak on behalf of believers. You can't speak on behalf of the deity. You can't speak on behalf of the temple. To put it in the language of Game of Thrones, you know nothing Jon Snow. As usual, his argument was very precise, lucid, and comprehensible. Don't apply secular logic into a religious places because you won't tolerate application of religious things in secular places. This is his argument to assert that there is no place for secular laws in temples. I think everyone would agree with this. Now listen to the last part of his argument. You want to tolerate application of religious things in secular places. But look, what do we see around us today? The followers of a particular religion think that they have the right to perform religious worship in public places. They use public places as a platform to display their religious worship in front of the public. They believe that secularism is something that grants them special rights, powers, and benefits. Do you think that secularism endorses such behavior? Have you ever heard the so-called secular lefties or any other secular preachers in the nation speak out against this misbehavior? Why don't these secular preachers inform them that religious worship and displays in public transportation, roadways, shopping malls, and other public places will disrupt our religious harmony? This double standard should be exposed. Those who give tacit permission to all of these types of activities for the foreign fund of religious fanatics should be exposed to the public. We want your feedback on this. So whatever you have to say, drop it in the comment box. Let's have a discussion on it here.